This is part 3 in our series of videos on section 1.2 concerning conditionals and biconditionals. In this video, we consider for a given conditional statement the related statements of its contrapositive, converse, and biconditional. So if P implies Q is a given statement, then the contrapositive of P implies Q is the statement not Q implies not P. And the converse of P implies Q is Q implies P. The important thing to understand is what is the logical connection between these three statements. Okay, here's an example for you to practice on. Consider the statement, if X is a natural number, then X is an integer. So write down the contrapositive and the converse of this statement. And then, for the resulting three statements, tell me which ones you believe are true. Oh, and by the way, our textbook defines the set of natural numbers uh, to be the numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. It doesn't include 0 as a natural number. And the integers are the uh, positive and negative counting numbers 0, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, etc. Okay, now put the video on pause, write down your answers, and then we'll compare uh, our answers. Okay, here are my answers. The original statement said, if x is a natural number, then x is an integer. That is uh, certainly a true statement. Any natural number is also an integer. Now, the original statement is a is a conditional statement where p is x is a natural number and q is x is an integer. So the contrapositive is not q implies not p, which means if x is not an integer, then x is not a natural number. And that's, that's what I've written here. That's a true statement, because if it's an object that isn't an integer, then it certainly couldn't possibly be a natural number. The converse of the statement is Q implies P, which says if X is an integer, then X is a natural number. So the implication is no matter which integer you pick, it must necessarily be a natural number. And that's certainly not true because um, some integers are not natural numbers. For example, minus 1 is not a natural number. So the converse is not true. And what happens if we modify the original question, uh, the original example, to read, if x is a natural number, then x is a strictly positive integer? By strictly positive, I mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So now, the, this original statement is still true. The contrapositive now reads, if x is not a strictly positive integer, then x is not a natural number. That is certainly true. And the converse reads, if x is a strictly positive integer, then x is a natural number. That is also true. So in this case, all three of the statements are true. So these two examples illustrate a very important fact, uh, which says that if you start with any conditional statement, the contrapositive of that statement has exactly the same truth value as the original statement. And in general, the converse may or may not have the same truth value as the original statement. So that brings us to this theorem, which says that if you have a conditional statement, then it's logically equivalent to its contrapositive. And the conditional statement has no logical connection with its converse at all. In other words, whatever is the truth value of a conditional statement, its contrapositive has exactly the same truth value. And whatever the truth value of the conditional statement is, you can make no prediction one way or the other in advance as to what the truth value of the converse is. 
Well, it's a good exercise for you to try to prove the theorem. And the way you do it is to just simply write down the truth table for the given conditional statement, then write down the truth table for the contrapositive, and write down the truth table for the converse. If they turn out to be identical, then they're logically equivalent. And if they turn out to be different, then they're not logically equivalent. So that's a good exercise for you, and I'll, I'll leave it for you to do. Finally, we discuss what is meant by a biconditional statement, and it's denoted in this way, and we read it as P if and only if Q. That's how you would say it in words. P if and only if Q. Its definition is P implies Q and Q implies P. So what this is saying is that P if and only if Q is true precisely when P implies Q is true and Q implies P is true. In other words, the conditional statement and its converse are both true. So an example you've seen in which that's the case is the second example on the previous page. It's a good exercise for you to show that if you have a biconditional statement, P if and only if Q, Q then if that's a true statement, um, then P and Q necessarily have exactly the same truth values. Um, and conversely, if P and Q have exactly the same truth values, then the biconditional statement is true. And the way you do that, it's quite simple. You just simply write down the truth table for P if and only if Q. In other words, you write down the truth table for this one, and on the same table you include this one, and then on the next column you take the conjunction of those two, so that will give you the truth table of P if and only if Q. And just check that the only places where that's true are the places where both P and Q are true, and where P and Q are both false. If P is true and Q is false, then you'll discover that um, the truth table for this one um, is false. Okay, so I'll leave that for you as an exercise. I just wanted to make one final comment that in um, doing these exercises, you have to do them for generic P's and Q's. It's not enough for you to verify that they work for the specific examples that I did on this uh, video. Just because it works for a particular example doesn't mean that it's true in general.